All right, so let's go over some of the things that, uh, that we'll need in order to make these chains. So the first thing that you'll need is a nice pair of bolt cutters uh, or chain cutters. If you don't have these, then I guess you can use a uh, hacksaw to cut through chain, but good luck uh, cutting through this. You'll need a vise and uh, it'll just be a giant pain. These are, these are about 30 bucks, I think, at Lowe's. They're not very expensive. You can get bigger size. In fact, with these, I think I'm going to have some trouble cutting through this chain. Second thing you need is some chain. So here I have some 3 16 inch chain. And this looks to be uh, bigger. Maybe this is uh, 5 16 or even uh, um, 3 8 I'm not, I'm not quite certain. This is just some chain that I had laying around. I'm going to use this thicker stuff as the ribs and this thinner stuff uh, I will use as ribs when I need, but for the most part just the uh, um, the circumference. And I think the, for the ribs I'm going to double these up, I'm going to twist these up in, uh, in two pairs, or in a pair, and use those as a rib. So I've got 150 feet of chain in this box and I've probably got uh, maybe 30 feet of, of this bigger chain here um, which which is not really enough for to make the ribs so um, uh, let's go over some of the stuff that oh the last thing you need is a tape measure and you will need some way of attaching the ribs these pieces these pieces here to to the uh, to the longer pieces of chain. So let's uh, um, I will start cutting these and measuring them out, uh, and then I will lay them down and show you how it, how it looks. So I am attaching the ribs to the uh, to the long section of the thing. I don't have enough uh, of these clips let me show these clips here I don't have enough of these clips because Lowe's only had like 30 of them or so and I need approximately 40 of them to uh, to complete my both sets of chains and so I'm substituting with uh, with just some uh, baling wire and I think it should do an adequate job just to wrap it around here several times and then it should uh, it should be strong enough to uh, to hold it. I don't expect there to be much uh, tension on these ends here, really. Um, so otherwise, we will find out. I mean, the tractor does weigh about seventeen thousand pounds unloaded, so there may be some force on them, but there may not be. So I figure if rubber lugs can withstand the, uh, the force on the tires, that bit of steel should also. So it looks like I've put these uh, ribs about every 12, 12 links on this chain except for the first one which I put in. I measured four inches in. Uh, and if you see I've gone every other one with uh, with the, uh, the, big, the big cable or the big chain and then the little all right, so here we are with chain number one completed. Let's go through how I attach them to the sides real quick. I was in the process of demonstrating how I was uh, wrapping some of them with this wire uh, because my local Lowe's ran out of these clips. If you can see these clips here. So, pretty simple. For this narrow chain right here, this 3 uh, three sixteenths chain, I twisted them so that they'll act as, as kind of one really large chain, uh, similar as to why I wanted to use this big one here. Because basically the bigger around your chain is, the, the more traction it should get if it digs deep. And I'm targeting mine for mud, so I need them to dig deep. Um, so this is chain number one. Uh, it's a little bit snowy outside right now, otherwise I would go uh, 
try to fit these onto my tractor uh, and see what uh, uh, see the fit before I actually start making number two because if I need to make any adjustments in the in the uh, length of these then I want to do that before I get them all cut out I can always if the if this part if the length of the chain is too short or too long right now I can always I can always cut it but if these are uh, cut it or uh, uh, add an extension here I can always add extenders on the on the ends so it's uh, really easy to add lengtheners to uh, the ends of these if it's too short it's pretty easy to, if I need to uh, if it's too long if I need to uh, take one of these take one of the ribs off and then shorten this uh, shorten this but if I have to lengthen these obviously or shorten these that's something that probably isn't going to happen so there are the chains oh let me go over something that I discovered as I was cutting as I was cutting this chain right here I discovered that this set of bolt cutters was not adequate so if you get a set of bolt cutters I would recommend to buy the largest size that the store offers within reason I mean you probably want something that's twice the size of what I have I'll show you what I had to use to uh, uh, to do this I had to, to cut that I had to use my nice handy die grinder with the cutoff blade and uh, and my handy air compressor and this air compressor is pretty expensive and will, works great for air gun uh, for uh, uh, nail guns but for a little for a die grinder like that it's still quite underpowered so it took me a while to cut every, all of those uh, those five or so links or those five or so ribs so that does it for uh, chain number one hopefully somebody else can uh, get some benefit from this all right so here is the second tractor uh, the second chain that I that I made it's on it fits and it works this one works all right uh, I use some of these tie downs ratcheting tie downs from Lowe's they're 15 bucks for four of them I use three in the front uh, you might be able to use uh, four or more to get a, a better uh, tightening on everything, but it works pretty good. I used, I've used it already, and after the first tight de after I tightened down the first time, and I stopped using it, they were a little bit used, so I ratcheted them down a little bit tighter. And I was upset because this one, I bent. These are very cheap tie downs, and they bend very easily. Notice that these are straight, and this one is very very crooked so that one's ruined but it's on there and it's tight and I won't have to take it off for a long time the other one on the other hand did not do so well as a matter of fact one of the one of the ribs came off as you can see there hanging there it's pretty loose I already took the tie downs off but it was pretty loose I'm surprised it didn't even actually just fall off now this was the first chain I built and like the second one it was a little bit short so I added this little I added another extension to it and then it fit pretty well but the difference with this one is that on the second one I used a bunch of a bunch of extra chain and I put uh, um, more ribs on it so that it had more traction so this one's every every uh, 12th link the other one is pretty much every uh, every fifth or seventh link um, so let's, uh, I sprayed this one off just because it was really muddy. Um, let's check the back here to see if it's still attached. Yep, so the back is still attached right there. But as you can see, that's how it was when I parked it pretty much. You know, this thing kind of coming off to the side, not really fitting very well. Um, it did work though, it offered some traction. Um, uh, but obviously when it broke, the amount of traction that it offered was, was uh, substantially less. Now let's go down to uh, my yard to see where I was using. I'll show you some of the ch the chain marks in the dirt here. So if you see these right there, you can maybe you can make out the uh, you know the marks from the one chain. So this was the chain with uh, the the second chain I built in there. The links are pretty close together. 
which come on this side, uh, the marks are pretty much, much further apart. But anyways, let's go down to the rest of my yard.